o'clock news. A Quan City's man learned how long he'll spend in prison for beating another man and leaving him for dead in a ditch. Good evening, I'm Chris Williams. Kim is off tonight. Details on James Salkill sentence in just a moment. But first on Fox tonight, a family of six is safe thanks to something you probably have in your home. A smoke detector warned them of the fire raging through their Port Byron home early this morning. Fox 18's Angie Mitchum explains why they're lucky those safety devices were working when they needed them most. Oops. Investigators say the extensive damage may make it difficult to determine the cause. The latest long term flood projections are looking better than originally expected for our area, but that does not mean we're entirely in the clear just yet. Throughout the entire length of the viewing area, the Mississippi River is now above flood stage. While we're not as likely to see record level flooding, a lot depends on how much precipitation will come our way over the next several weeks. Long term flood projections have our area in danger of prolonged flooding until sometime in June. And access to Davenport's Credit Island has been closed due to rising water tonight. Two weeks ago, city crews surrounded the Credit Island Lodge with sandbags. When the river reaches 17 feet, the city loses access to the island. And James, I have to give you credit. You called this sunny, mild day dead on yesterday. So you have to let us know what you have in store for us tonight because tomorrow it's Friday, buddy. <laughs> you got that right. And we want to keep that stretch of nice weather. Thank you, James. Tonight, the small town of Monmouth, Illinois, is dealing with some big city problems after a string of robberies. The Warren County Sheriff says the suspect in eight robberies is a woman who knocks on doors and enters homes through open doors in broad daylight. The burglary started in Monmouth a few weeks ago, but they're also now taking place in other areas of Warren County. Investigators say the suspect steals anything she can get her hands on quickly, like cash, electronics, even guns. The county sheriff is so concerned, they've beefed up daytime patrols and brought in the ATF. James Sonkel started off the day asking for a new trial, but he ended the day leaving a Scott County courtroom headed to prison for life. Sonkel's lawyer filed a motion for a new trial, citing new evidence. He called another inmate to the stand today who accused a detective of lying at Sonkel's trial. The judge denied that request and handed down the mandatory sentence. Sonkel will now spend life in prison for beating Anthony McFarland and leaving him for dead in a Davenport ditch. It is what Sockle's lawyer read a letter at today's sentencing. In it, he blames drugs and alcohol for what happened on March 11th of last year. Anthony McFarland suffered permanent brain damage and has to wear protective gear due to the loss of part of his skull. Illinois lawmakers are a step closer to approving a concealed weapons law. A House committee has approved amendments on a proposed law. The new version expands the places where firearms would still be banned, including libraries, police stations, schools, sporting events, bars and restaurants, where alcohol represents the bulk of sales. The move comes as supporters have negotiated with the state's police chiefs association. Opponents want federal background checks included in any law and expiration dates for permits requiring retesting by applicants. And this is the way Iowa's U.S. congressional districts look right now. But lawmakers are getting a first look at redrawn congressional districts and the Hawkeye state is losing one of its five seats due to the latest census. The proposal shifts Congressman Bruce Braley's first district out of the Quad Cities and Clinton County. It also moves Congressman Dave Loebsack's second district into the Quad Cities with Southeast Iowa and Democrat leading Johnson County. This is just the first draft of the nonpartisan proposal. The Iowa House or Senate need to approve it or send it back for revisions. Governor Branstad needs to sign that plan by September 15th. Otherwise, the Iowa Supreme Court would make the final decision. Defense Secretary Robert Gates does not support lowering the drinking age for U.S. troops, but that's not deterred an Alaska lawmaker from renewing the debate over whether military members old enough to fight and die for their country are responsible enough to drink and smoke. Republican Representative Bob Lynn proposed the bill that would allow military members under the age of 21 to legally drink and smoke in Alaska. Currently, residents cannot legally drink until they're 21 and legally smoke until they're 19 there. We began a conversation about this story on Facebook earlier today. To have your say, log on to your Fox 18 Facebook page. Is It's what you don't want to see on your commute. And a plan to deal with roadkill? It got some laughs at first, but tonight it's closer to becoming a law in Illinois. That story's coming up. But first... With just days of funding left, there are flickers of compromise on Capitol Hill. That story is next on your Fox 18 9 o'clock news. You're watching your Fox 18 9 o'clock news.
more than a week until a government shutdown tonight. There are flickers of compromise beginning to show. Tea Party supporters rallied on Capitol Hill today demanding that Republicans stand firm to their promise to cut $100 billion from funding for fiscal year 2011. Funding is said to expire April 8th. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says the parties have agreed to a compromise but have yet to work out the details. The so-called deal being touted by Reid and Vice President Joe Biden right now would reportedly cut $33 billion in spending for the rest of the fiscal year. House Speaker John Boehner says there is no deal. A war-torn country is beginning to dream of a brand new capital. It's our top stories we go around the world in 80 seconds. An area lawmaker has a plan to save money that's sure to draw some chuckles, but she insists her roadkill rule is a good idea and it may become a law. Now, James, try to follow that. Oh, yeah. Take a look at the damage done as storms plowed through Tampa Bay this morning. Funnel clouds knocked out traffic lights, uprooted trees, and delayed the commute. Tampa Electric reported 60,000 people without power, James. Oh, we heard that yeah. this all came through as they were going on their morning commute. There were a lot of traffic accidents because people weren't obeying those uh, stoplights. It could have been a whole lot worse. And I understand they were just weak, so it is getting there. We're getting to spring. And you know, one of our camera operators often brings his service dog. Yes. into the studio. Stick around for this, James, because a California woman can keep her service animal as long as it remains on a leash and does not misbehave. He's a rat named oh. Hayo <laughs> Silver. New federal rules limiting service animals to dogs and some miniature horses made Danny more scared that she'd lose her helpers. She can't feel sensations due to a spinal nerve injury, so the rats lick her neck to warn her about dangerous spasms. Mm -hmm. Moore asked the Hesperia City Council for an ordinance so she could keep Hayo Silver, and they passed the rule naming rats as service animals. An area lawmaker may change the way you look at roadkill. Republican Noreen Hammond of Macomb passed her first bill through the Illinois House this week. HB 3178 would allow anyone, anyone with a permit in the proper season to take fur bearing animals found dead along a road. The plan allows pelts to be used and hopefully remove roadkill from Illinois roads. Lawmakers laughed at first, then they realized the savings. In years past, the state struggled to fund getting rid of critters who didn't make it past traffic. Tonight, there's hope in the hearts of local baseball fans. That is because it's opening day. Matt, this is the day when everybody has a chance for the pennant. There's optimism for everyone. It's football season still so a ways away. Baseball season is here. Oh, I know you've man, had you your eye it. on the, the Dodgers tonight. Cub fans, they get going tomorrow afternoon. The Sox do as well. So If the Sox can avoid the snow. Exactly. Exactly. Everybody has to. It was a cold day in New York today, all over the place. Weather, of course, Zahara and those guys usually ruin things anyways. You yeah. know how that is. We'll say the same thing in October or November when we actually get the World Series in, right? Let's hope that there's actual baseball in October, November for Cubs or Cardinal fans. <laughs> Let's get there first and then we'll worry about Good. the weather. <laughs> Good point. Thanks, Matt. A real estate deal in California is turning heads tonight. Wait until you hear what this quaint little place sold for. That story's next on your Fox 18, 9 o'clock news north of the Quad Cities, but nonetheless, the chance is there. Then once we blow that away, a nice start to the weekend. This is the kind of day you want to, you know, show a house or, you know, it's Chamber of Commerce right. kind of day here. Right. Well, check out this house. Oh. Finally, a Fox and I, who says there's a housing oh, crisis? 25,500 square foot mansion in California sold for a hundred million dollars. That actually is James's house. <laughs> a Russian billionaire Yuri Milner purchased a lavish home in Los Altos. It's believed to be the most ever paid for a single family home. The French style chateau is set on 18 acres in the hills of overlooking the San Francisco Bay. Has a pool inside, a theater, single, ballroom, a white single cellar, family. single family, single. huge family. <laughs> wow. How big is that family? Yeah. Uh, they got a hundred million bucks or more. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. Have a great night, Quad Cities.